Hello everybody, Pinstripe here. Welcome to the Hogs of War card game. This is the expansion pack known as the Bay of Pigs. And today we're going to be going through all of the new items, weapons, abilities, alongside just discussing the overall expansion pack and what it brings as a whole. So to begin with, we're going to start off by going through the new classes. Not the Grunt, obviously he's still in there. But the four new characters, which obviously to most of us who play Hogs of War aren't technically new. Uh, but in the card game, they offer a wide variety of abilities in themselves, along with uh, different health as well, except for uh, the th three new guys who have 100 and the Pyrotechnic who has 110. So the Pyrotechnic adds an extra burn token when playing a card with burn status, so primarily the Flamethrower, which is pretty cool. The Commando, after an action, you can discard any card to restore 20 HP, which in itself, maybe is a little bit overpowered because ultimately you can just continuously heal yourself if you decide to play a card and then discard one as well. Meanwhile the spy, when making a hide action, choose a supply card from your opponent's hand and add it to your own. So you can choose to hide, basically miss your turn, but you can steal a card from your opponent. And then finally we have the sapper, discard an explosive card to add 20 damage to an explosive card's attack. So if you have two explosive cards, you can play one and discard one to deal extra damage to your opponents. Obviously, in terms of teams, we have uh, the same standard pigs from the very first game of the card game uh, on this side. Uh, so you've seen we have the British and the Germans. And then on the other side, we have Piggy Stroika and the Americans, I believe, because, I mean, that hat looks kind of American. So with this update comes plenty of new weapons, abilities, deployables and skills. Uh, and the first one, of course, being a deployable is the pillbox. In the standard uh, first version of the card game, you have trenches, you have bunkers and you have medical tents. But here you have the introduction of a vehicle of some kind, which if you deploy it, it has a range of two and three and it is extremely overpowered in some cases. If you have lots of gun cards, you can discard any number of them from your hand to deal 20 extra damage per card. So if I discarded two of my gun cards, I could deal 40 damage to either of these players. So it's pretty crazy. Next up, we have the Tranquilizer Rifle, which has a range of three, which is uh, pretty powerful. So I could use the Commando to go ahead and damage the Pyrotechnic. It does 20 damage, but it also applies a stun token to the enemy pig that you are shooting at. So obviously, just as it does in the normal game, it would mean that uh, if the player that you're playing against would want to use their Pyrotechnic, they would have to remove the stun token and basically lose their turn. Next up, we have a skill which is only for the grunt. It is a ham radio, which you can use to swap damage from an adjacent friendly hog. So if I played this, I could swap the damage from the commando. I mean, there's no damage on my grunt so far, but I would take the damage that was on him and apply it to my grunt. Then we have the first explosive card of the cluster grenade, which does 20 damage, has a range of two. So if I use my commando, I can damage either the spy or their commando. So with that 20 damage, it also does uh, splash damage to the adjacent hogs. So for instance, if I am targeting their commando, it would deal 20 to him, but it would also deal 20 to the sapper and I believe 20 to the grunt as well, because uh, they are both adjacent to the commando that you're targeting. Next up, we have another skill card, which is only for the sniper, who is actually over here. So if he were to use it, he could deal 40 damage to any enemy hog, ignoring any deployables and if a pig is hidden. So the headshot can do 40 damage. For instance, if I'm trying to target this engineer who is hidden, I could still deal damage. Or if he had uh, an, a deployable that was in front of him that blocks any kind of gun damage, I could still do the headshot. Next up, another skill card, this time for the orderly only. It is, of course, the medical ball. If you were to play this, then you could restore 10 HP to all of your friendly hogs and remove any status effects. So, for instance, I would obviously then remove the 10 from him. I would remove the 40 from him, replace that with 30. 
and same old same old with the other two and of course these two guys are stunned so you could instantly remove the stun tokens from there and the medical ball I think is a good introduction into uh, having more types of healing within this card game because initially you only really had healing hands and the self heal but now you actually have a weapon or an item that you can use to heal your entire team. Then we have the explosive of the grenade launcher. Pretty simple, range of three or four. So if I play it as my pyrotechnic, then I can target either his sapper or pyrotechnic as well. It does 30 damage and has the swap over symbol. So obviously it would do 30 damage and then you can choose to swap them around with the pyrotechnic or the commando. Knockback in itself is incredibly powerful when you combine it with minefields. So for instance, like I said, if I target their sapper, then it deals the 30 damage and then swapping them out with either the commando or the pyrotechnic will then deal an additional 30 damage alongside that. So you really want to combine it with the minefield specifically wherever possible. The next one is going to be the ray gun. Now this one you may find to be a little bit confusing seeing as Hogs of War in the actual game doesn't have any kind of funky space age weapons, but this one is pretty self-explanatory and quite powerful given the certain situation as it has a range of two or three. And I mean, if you use it with a grunt that removes the range by one, so you can target either one or two. So you can have it in combination with whatever class alongside that doing 10 damage having a stun and a burn marker as well, which bearing in mind if a pig is burning, if they are on fire, then they will take 10 damage per turn. So uh, the ray gun, even though it has minor damage, its after effects are quite strong. Next up is gonna be the skill card for the pyrotechnic only. This is the Molotov cocktail, an interesting introduction into being able to destroy enemy deployables. And because it doesn't have a range marker on it, I believe you can target any of the enemy lanes. So in this case, you can destroy a deployable from an enemy lane and add a burn status to the occupying enemy hog. So for instance, if I want to destroy this bunker, I'll get rid of that. And of course, it then applies a burn marker to the spy. Then we have the potentially overpowering poison gas. Now take a look at this one. If I deploy this, then all enemy and friendly hogs not in a trench, barbed wire, or bunker deployable are poisoned. So that would mean that every single pig except for that enemy grunt <laughs> would then have a stun token. It's essentially a way of ending an entire round and just stopping your opponents from really dealing any damage. I think it would be most effective if you're not player one, so if, if you're not taking your turn first and you deploy the poison gas, you can then make it so that every other turn is just removing a stun token, and then when it comes back to you, obviously you then being player one again, and taking your turn first, you can then inflict some damage. So there is some strategy to it, but it does seem a little bit overpowering. Speaking of stunning pigs, we then have another skill card for the Bombardier. This is the Suppressive Fire card. If you use this, you can have a range of two, three, or four, and you can apply a stun to two enemy hogs, which is pretty powerful in terms of uh, the stun tokens, because ultimately that is just tranquilizing two pigs and gaining yourself the upper hand given whatever situation you may be in. Next up is a pretty simple one, but one that everyone will know. It is of course the airstrike. If you use this, then all enemy hogs, not in a trench, barbed wire or bunker deployable, will take 20 damage. So every other pig, except for again, the grunt who is behind the barbed wire, will be damaged by 20. Next up, we have a very welcome addition to the healing category of the Medidart, which has a range of three, four or five, which is pretty sweet if you're looking to heal pigs on the other side of your lane and it does 30 health, so uh, very much welcome there. I'm, I'm, I'm always happy uh, when there are lots of healing options available when you're playing this card game, because like I said previously, it did feel fairly limited uh, in the first update for the card game. Next up we have the pretty powerful Super TNT, which has a range of one, but I believe it does 80 damage in total. As you can see here, it has times two of the TNT sign, which is of course the 40 damage. And initially the regular TNT does do 40 damage. So you can do a maximum of 80 to the pig that is adjacent to the pig that you're using. But do bear in mind that the Super TNT, I believe there's only one in the entire pack of cards. So it is pretty rare. 
Then we have the last new deployable, which is the heavy artillery. Here it has a range of either three or four. So if I use it on my pyrotechnic, then I can hold it here. And if I discard any number of explosive cards, basically does the same as the pillbox, but has a much larger range. And you can use that in combination with whatever explosive cards you have and want to get rid of to deal extra damage to anyone that is within range of the heavy artillery. Next up we have a melee item, which is going to be the Super Flamethrower. Here it has a range of 1, 2 or 3 with the standard 40 damage and a burn mark. And yeah, not really much else to say about that. It's a welcome addition because the regular Flamethrower has uh, a fairly limited range and it does less damage. But yeah, I don't know. It's, it's nice. I didn't realize the Super Flamethrower was a thing, but in the card game it certainly is. Then we have another skill card, this time for the Engineer, the Redeploy. If I use this, then I can basically move any two deployables to a new lane. So if I have a bunker, I can move it over to whatever lane, either left or right. And same with the enemy side as well. I can move theirs uh, if I so please. And ultimately, it just allows you to shift things around. Say, for instance, maybe you've had a commando or a sniper that's been sitting in a bunker for too long and you want to just move them over. I don't know, it just provides way more strategy. There is a lot more to this game that needs to be played and worked out. The, the meta needs to be worked out for this card game because, uh, I mean, I'm fairly new at playing this card game. I know I've had some gameplay on the channel uh, a few months ago. And of course, there will be new gameplay coming up very soon of the expansion pack itself. Um, but I'm learning as I'm going, essentially. Then we have the next skill card, this time for the Commando, the Special Ops, which has actually been made important in some way within the card game. Here, if you deploy this, then you can search the discard pile and take any one card and play it immediately. So I could go through whatever is in here, take whatever I want, as long as it's only one card, and I could play that immediately, wherever I want to, or at least within the lane, or whatever the card gives you, or whatever the card is whatever that allows essentially special ops it is good use it it's important next up we have a equipment card that is on the same level in terms of design as the ray gun in that it's a bit out there but we have the mind control device now this allows you to take control of an enemy pig so long as they have a free action so if we look over here i can only really take control of the grunt or the commando as the spy and the sapper have used their turn already uh, and through using the mind control device, if I take control of the commando, then I can use him to target any of the other enemy pigs. You can only do it once, but it is a pretty uh, pretty powerful weapon when it's put in the right hands. But there are only, I think, one or two of these in the entire deck. Next up, we have a very simple skill card for the sapper. It is Cut the Wire, which you can use to remove all the TNT tokens and minefields from adjacent friendly hogs. So for instance, I can use this to get rid of the enemy's minefield that is placed on my spies lane. Goodbye. So second to last, we have the very important and very powerful gun of the super shotgun. Now there's only one of these in the entire deck. It has a range of one. It does 50 damage, which is the most out of any weapon, I believe in the entire game, except for the super TNT. It does some knockback and it does a it does apply a stun token. So you can see here if I were to use it on the sapper, I mean he's basically dead. He's got like 80 damage on him already. So the stun token wouldn't really matter there, but you can see where it comes in handy. And I mean if you get it in your hand, you want to save it for just the right moment to inflict a huge amount of damage and knockback to your enemy that you are facing. And last but not least, we have the final skill card for the Spy of the Pickpocket. Now this allows you to steal all cards of the same type from the opponent and add them to your hand. So I believe if you just choose a certain card type, either explosive or gun or melee, then you can take them all from your opponent and apply them to your own hand. So that is just a very brief overview of the Hogs of War card game expansion pack known as the Bay of Pigs expansion update thingy-mabob. Check it out on Tabletop Simulator. The links to everything will be down below in the description. You can get Tabletop Simulator on Steam for a fairly decent price. And of course, the Bay of Pigs expansion pack is four player as well, which I'm hopefully going to be making videos on very soon, uploading gameplay, like I said, and giving you guys some more card game content 
uh, for us to talk about and discuss. If you have any other things that you want me to go over in the card game specifically, then do let me know because I'm always looking to make more content on the card game as much as you guys may want me to. But in the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will catch you guys later for the next one.